Let's welcome in Brett Good to the conversation. Brett, good morning, man. I know you want to talk good about. Morning. Uh, I know you want to talk about a bunch of things as far as this Arkansas football game is concerned. And just kind of before we get into the special teams uh, side of it, just your overall thoughts on their performance on Saturday. Overall, I thought we played really good, especially through the first half. You could really tell towards the second half that we didn't have the depth. You know, our starters seemed to be pretty comparable to, to Georgia, but the field position game lost lost the game for us more so than anything else. You know, we had three and outs, and everybody got tired. But when you're playing against a really good team and you're trying to win and you're playing on a, on a really long field and they're playing on a short field, there, there's no way to win, especially at home uh, with, with the way that we performed in the second half. I wonder, as a guy that uh, was a long snapper and a deep snapper, George Caratan had a couple big booming kicks. He was averaging 48 yards per punt, and I know the punt return coverage and the kick return coverage were not up to snuff for Scott, Scott Fountain, Sam Pittman, the Arkansas Razorbacks. Were there times you think in that game that he outkicked his coverage and really didn't give his guys a chance to make a play? I think you could say that. When you kick the ball that far, you'll see it a lot of times that the returns happen and guys get a little bit more spacing. But in that instance, I just didn't think we were covering down the field. I don't think he was necessarily over-kicking his coverage because our guys weren't even down there. You know, we've got to get off the line of scrimmage. We've got to run. We, you know, we've got to work on our releases at the line. That's, that's all the things that we should be working on this week to, to try and make ourselves better in order to cover those kicks. And it's like I said last week. When you don't have live games and every like live practices, covering kicks is really hard to do until your first game. And that was their first experience, and now we want to see them improve from it and see if they can make those adjustments. So yeah, we talk about adjustments. How difficult are they to make in the in the midst of a week where you don't have as much time as people may think you have? This is college; they're still going to class. They got limited number of hours they can practice. Um, there's a lot of priorities on the team. How much time will special teams get? In your opinion? Uh, and I know it's hard to tell because you hadn't played for this coaching staff, but how many adjustments can you really make at this point going into game two? Well, whenever I was playing, we had about 15 minutes of that practice to really get it done. So you're, the adjustments are going to be in the meeting rooms, not necessarily on the practice field. And, and the players are going to have to take some ownership to be able to get out there and say, this isn't good enough. But we've got to cover kicks and realize that that hidden yardage is what really cost them to, to struggle in the second half. Because in the first half, you look, I mean, we went in halftime winning. And in the second half, we just really got dominated even more so in the field position. So they've got to make those adjustments, and they've got to take the ownership, or it's going to be a problem all year long. On the block kick, what did you see? Where was the breakdown? <laughs> a lot of Georgia Bulldogs running towards our punter. <laughs> uh, it, it, I saw it coming as soon as we got up there, and I can just see it right at the beginning. I was like, oh, that's a block. Cause you just, they kind of crashed down towards the line of scrimmage, and we didn't have protection. We were, we were outmanned. And when, when they put that many people there, you know, our punter's got to be aware. Get the ball off. Anytime you've got, we always say, if there's more than six people right there that you think are rushing, you you better get the ball. That's your job because if we get the ball off, now they don't have anybody to block for the returner, and you're more likely to get a fair catch or maybe even a muff punt and you have something, a turnover back for the, for the good guys. So you've got to make those adjustments. They've got to see that at the line. They've been taught how to block that. It's not like that's the first time they've ever seen rushes like that, but they've got to make those adjustments a little bit quicker um, because teams are going to use that now. They, they, they've they been exposed, and, and so I wouldn't be surprised if this week we line up and, and we see that same block look coming up, uh, up against us. Yeah. So, Brett Good's with us here. He played for the Green Bay Packers for 10 years, former Razorback. We break down special teams and other aspects of the game on uh, every Wednesday morning at this time. Brett's uh, appearance here on the show is brought to you by Phillips, uh, Henderson Phillips Employer Solutions. Brett, overall, uh, let's step aside from special teams for just a moment. Uh, offensively, Felipe Franks at uh, quarterback had a couple of interceptions. What was your evaluation just of how the offense looked in game one? If we could take that first couple of drives, I think we would be all right if we could just continue that throughout the game. I think we've got to make those adjustments. I think we had a good, you know, they always say that the script of the first 15 plays, I think we had a really good first 15 plays. but We didn't make the adjustments to improve on that. I don't think that we need to run trick plays. I think that, that kind of hurt us in the situations yeah. that we ran those. Uh, but for overall, I thought our offensive line protected well. I think that we've got to get more uh, more running attack. Um, I think we've got to catch the ball, and I think we've got to you know hit the open receiver when we've had a couple of wide open receivers in in those critical moments. You know, especially on on second and third down to, to try and keep the chains moving. Because at the end of the day, if the offense can keep the ball moving, at least get a first down, you're giving your defense 
a little bit more time to rest, and that gives you a little bit better chance to continue to stop them on defense. Yeah, you, Brett, you bring up defense time to rest. You look at the second half of that football game where Arkansas has several three and outs. They throw a uh, pick six. They throw another interception. They have a turnover on downs. The defense played incredible in the first half and then just ran out of gas in the second. Uh, how does the offense adjust, and does it worry you a little bit that Kendall Browse is trying to up, establish this up-tempo office similar to Chad Morris, and you, you really didn't see a lot of success early on on Saturday? No, I just it, it doesn't worry me. The, the biggest issue is I think we've got to make those adjustments where we can just have a little bit. Because you watch Kansas City. The Kansas City goes out there, and they – they are able to take what we call an eight-minute offense. You're trying to just kill a little bit of time, and you're trying to get the ball down the field. And they've got to learn to. There's times to go fast, and there's times to go slow. And, and when your defense, you start seeing them going to the oxygen tank over there. We need to slow it down a little bit and try and just just get a couple first downs and move it. Even if we have to punt, you get a couple first downs. You don't realize how much time actually comes off that clock and gives those guys an extra chance to rest. Brett, you played one of the best quarterbacks I've ever seen in Aaron Rodgers, and he has a persona about him. He has a, char- a charisma about him. He's just he's just unbelievable. He's got all the talent in the world. And when you look at the quarterback position for Arkansas, you've had some guys, especially at the beginning of the decade, and Ryan Mallon and Tyler Wilson, that were just awesome. They just commanded the football team. Do you see any characteristics of that in Felipe Franks? Absolutely. I think, you know, when he, when he left the game, kind of got hit there in, in the pocket, he, he still came back in and stood in the pocket. And that's what you want to see is that toughness. So he, he's got the toughness. He didn't give up. And, and throughout the game, he just kept fighting. Yeah, he threw a couple of interceptions. And, and it's not what he wanted to do by any means. But, you know, we're all human. So now let's get that over with. Let's learn from those mistakes. And now I want to see him come out this next week and really st- just keep swinging the ball. That's what we want to see is him throwing deep. And if, once he starts throwing deep again, we know he's got that confidence within himself, and that's huge. All right, what do you want to see this week when you watch this team go on the road Saturday night in Starkville? Uh, from a special team spam- standpoint, your your expertise, what what needs to look different, what needs to, to execute different this week for Arkansas? I want to see us cover kicks. I want to see us be able to take that protection because I think that there will be another punt rush towards us. And I want to see that end of the half. I want to see a little bit better on the, on the field goal execution of, of the timeouts <laughs> and kind of handling the, the game management to be a, everything to run smoothly. Because the more smoothly you can run the special team, the more that we will be able to just kind of get out there and play free. All right. Brett Good's with us every Wednesday. We talk special teams, former Hog, former uh, Super Bowl champion with the Green Bay Packers. Brett, you're now on the team at Henderson Phillips Employer Solutions. I know someone listening today is the person that's in charge of all the insurance and the employee benefits where they work. They need to call you. Absolutely. We offer private HR consulting to employee benefits to all your property and casualty needs. And we have been super busy, and we would love to take on your team. And it doesn't matter whether you're big or small. Just give us a call and give us an opportunity to work together. And we look forward to joining our teams to making a championship team. 479-651-2292 Four seven nine six five one twenty two ninety two is the number. That's that's your direct number to call you. That's my personal cell phone. You call me and we'll talk a little football in the meantime. Day or night or late at night, right? Absolutely. I'll either answer or I won't if, it's, if I'm asleep. <laughs> All right. Four seven nine six five one twenty two ninety two. Brett Good. He is with the winning team at Henderson Phillips Employer Solutions. We'll chat next Wednesday and hopefully we got. Some real positives to take away from the trip to start. Uh, I look forward to it. Go Hogs. We'll talk right. to you soon. Former Razorback Brett Good and Super Bowl champion here with us on the morning rush.